Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talent in Connecticut. And tonight's show, I'm pleased to have on a girls basketball player who had a great career for the Windsor Locks Raiders, uh, Carly McDougald. I appreciate you coming on. I'm very glad to be here. Very happy you asked me. You know, it's great to be able to have young talent on, especially ones that have really done a lot both on and off the court. And I know Coach No was kind of filling me in on some of your you know, the four years with Windsor Locks. And I want to get into that. Uh, but real quick, I know you played in an all-star game just a couple of days ago. How was yeah. that? It was, I mean, I was a little nervous going in. I mean, they announced everybody and you really just have like the best of the best. I mean, we're playing double M schools, M schools and S. So there mm. was definitely some familiar faces, but a lot, a lot of tall girls too. So going in, I was a little nervous, but everyone was really, really good. And it was just good to be around a bunch of players that really know basketball. And it was very fast paced, but overall, I enjoyed it a lot. A lot of fun. Do you feel like too, because I know you and I were talking about as far as, you know, what, you know, basketball as being competitive, although I'm sure intramurals, if you have that opportunity will be, but as far as competitive vying for a trophy, a ring and all that, it's kind of, you know, with the last game being played, do you feel like it kind of came full circle for you a little bit? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was like, it was a very bittersweet moment. Cause I mean, I've been playing for so long and it was kind of nice to end it with like a, something that was about me is always about the team that you're playing for and with and your teammates, but it was kind of like mm. full circle in the way that like, I got to like kind of get mine and do things that I wanted to do and, and kind of shine a little bit. So definitely, definitely. Well, we're going to preview as far as just kind of talk about the four years with Windsor locks, but really quick as well. Um, Kind of, you know, I love asking athletes what led them to the sport of which either or sports, if they play multiple sports, um, for you, the game of basketball, I mean, how did it kind of direct to your way? Direct to me? Like, how did I, like, start? Yeah, how did it find you? How, how did, as I call it in the broadcast, how did the peach find a way to be able to become a basketball and then you shot with? I don't know. Um, Definitely my my parents. Definitely my family. We're very, very much so an athletic want to always be busy family so I mean I don't even remember not playing basketball like in the driveway with my brother was, you know he's whooping up on me all my whole, my whole childhood so I definitely started like and then when I started my travel teams and all my friends are doing it and then that just led into AAU for like years and years and that was pretty much just my life and then that became part of like this identity that I had that I was just all about basketball all the time and then when I got to high school it was just like like that was my thing. So it just kind of became every day. When you entered Windsor Locks, and it sounds like now, did you play any other sports or was it just basketball? Uh, I play softball too. I play softball. Okay, too. softball. Awesome. And now you have one final season with that. So that's very good right. to be able to kind of end, you know, on a high note. And I'm not saying your basketball season wasn't a high note, but just right. as far as, okay, this is the last time I can compete where there's something on the line. You know what I mean? Right. So as you entered Windsor Locks, and we're just focusing on basketball here, um, were you nervous as a freshman? Was it, I mean, I'm sure you weren't nervous just because of, you mentioned your brothers, right? Right. Uh, I, I mean, I was, I was definitely nervous, but the age group ahead of me, I had like a lot of friends and they were all starting and I was kind of, or they were all playing a lot more minutes than I was. And I knew that like, I, I wasn't overly confident coming in, but still like the right amount of confidence as a freshman. Um, I definitely was like surprised yet expected to get a few minutes here and there, but it was kind of, it was kind of like a shockwave when I started to see the older girls play because they were so, it was a totally different level of basketball and I played AAU, but it was just different. So I was just excited more that I got to like be on the bench with those girls and like, even like the minutes that I got in, I was excited to be there. Now, what made it, you know, as you mentioned, you said that the the game was a little different because you came from AAU and then you enter as a freshman um what exactly if you could remember you know back then when you were a freshman that was so different to you where you kind of even took yourself you know a step back for a minute I think just the team like playing with real teammates I mean I've been you've been practicing with them all summer and AAU is you know it's kind of I don't want to I'm not trying to say selfish but it's like you don't form as much of a bond with your team and now it's not it's not about me it's about everybody and it's about this common goal so it went from what can I do for myself to what is my job to help my teammates and learning that and having to like and especially like my coach preaches you know the community on the team so anything it just was like 
I had to realize what, what my part was to the team, not my part for myself. And, it, and everyone had that same mindset. I think that's why we we're so successful that year in particular. You know, and I think a lot of people forget this. I think you're the final class as far as that was affected by COVID as right. far as coming through. Um, and, and your season was not to say shortened because you at least were able to play full season, but as far as competing in the state tournament, I know coach no was telling me it was cut short. I think you guys won your first game and then you didn't get to play the second game, right? Yeah, we would have had two. I think, I think we were going in, we would have had two more games if we won those and we wouldn't, you know, so, and we were pretty expected to go far in the state tournament and we had had that last home game and then the next day it shut down and it was like, I will never forget the day that like my teammates got together and we heard the news and it was just like, we could not believe it. And we could not believe it. I think there's many, many times as somebody continues to grow older and hopefully for a long, long time, there's certain moments in their life that they're going to always remember. Right. Like, right. you're, you know, we always remember your birthday. Sadly, you know, for some people like in my age, you know, we remember nine 11, where were we at that time? I remember I was, you know, in school and I couldn't believe it. Like they were telling us just to leave, wouldn't tell us why. And then other parts too of moments that you will always remember. I feel like when you find out that the season's over and I'm sure there were seniors on the team that were just like, not like sad, distraught, probably angry. I know, I remember people were protesting in Cheshire, like say, like, you know, when you think about that, you know, how were you able to just stay positive mentally and just all of that. Cause I know it was tough, especially on the younger people like you. Like throughout COVID you mean, or like witnessing? Yeah. Well, witnessing uh, and just COVID the whole thing, because it had to be tough. Yeah. It was definitely as far as basketball and COVID goes. And that kind of carries into my sophomore year too, because like I, like I understood that not every team gets that far. Like that was not normal. Even though I was a freshman, I only had, my part of it like watching my senior classmates or even my junior classmates go through that like that their chance just got ripped away from them it wasn't like we lost a game like we didn't like no one deserved that obviously and then even going into my sophomore year it was like we only played 12 games like this is not what my high school career was supposed to be like this is I started I started that year I was supposed to have a lot of games under my belt uh, that we didn't have a state tournament that year either. We had to play a conference. We had to play against bigger teams that we wouldn't have played against in the state tournament. So in a way, it was just like a double whammy two years in a row. We're getting our opportunities stripped from us when we have a team that can really excel. So it was definitely harder to come back my junior year after like having gone through all of that. Mm-hmm. But overall, it was like it was our, all of our teammates were there for each other. And we wanted to be there for our coach, too, because they're working just as hard. And um, we just kept had to, we had to look forward to the next year and just focus on next year and not dwell on what was happening to us in the present at the time. Now, for your game specifically, with the a lot of time that you got your, you know, your freshman year and then losing some time and I'm sure workouts and playing AAU was affected as well leading up to that sophomore year. Right. Did you almost feel like that in terms of your game, if you do have an opportunity to play in college, you know, if you decide to go that route, um, that you're kind of almost not to say that you're behind, but that there's still there's more left in the tank. That's what I'm trying to say, that you're basically realistically, you're really a junior right now. You're not right. really a senior. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And not to mention, like my junior year, we're going to the state tournament again. And I got injured. So that was the third year that I didn't really get to, I didn't get what I like deserved at that moment in time. Like we we worked the whole season and then both times we get it ripped from us. So it was definitely like, I definitely feel like none of those years were complete. Like you're saying, there's still something left in the tank. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so I definitely want to keep playing in college. Like it's, I can't just like, it wasn't a good ending to the story. Like there's a lot more. It was never fulfilled. So I definitely want to play as much as I can next year. Now, what injury did you have your junior year? I tore part of my quad. Okay. So I was on crutches and the whole shebang. So, so that probably puts you out, not just working out, but I'm sure even, you know, just just even trying to like be around basketball. I'm sure it's tough. It was, it was a lot of sitting and it was the end of the season. So then I had, I couldn't play softball. I couldn't play basketball. It was a lot of, doing the clock during practice, sitting there, trying to keep this positive energy, just Mm -hmm. clapping on the side. It was a lot of clapping on the sidelines. It it really was. I can imagine that was very annoying. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it sucked. But I also got to watch them win a few games, which was like so exciting because you know it was just I wanted to celebrate what my teammates were doing at the same time. It wasn't all about me. So, but it was it was it was hard. Definitely. Hard. I you know I could imagine that you know, but I think with every negative, if you want to look at a glass half full approach, that there are positives to it. Now, what I'm about to ask you is is that I know when I interviewed a young lady from Seymour, Kenzie Surowich, she plays at Franklin Pierce. I think she was just named the conference rookie of the year amongst the team. She's a great player, played at Seymour. Um, I asked her when she was hurt as far as kind of seeing the game from a different outlet, kind of like what you did, sitting back, doing the clock, but watching the game rather than playing. So do you feel like, and she thought that she was able to dissect things when she was back on the court and she scored over a thousand points in just a couple of seasons because of her serious leg injuries. Were you able to kind of take that same approach and see the game differently when you were doing the clock and just watching practice? Actually, my first practice after I got hurt, after we watched one, they had one game, and the first comment I made was to my coach, I was like, wow, I, I'm i sitting, even moving my seat on the bench, like I'm seeing things that they're yelling to me in a game, and I didn't see that pass on the court, and then I'm watching, and I'm like, wow, that, that was wide open, they were right, like, you don't, you really don't see it. And there's so much, there's not enough time in the game to process what they're saying all the time. And mm-hmm. then I had to just reiterate to my teammates, like there are so many other things, like if you slow down for a second, it's there. So definitely what she said, I completely agree with. It was a whole different, a whole different ball game from a different point of view that you would, they don't have time to think about in the game. So I definitely agree with everything she said about that. When coach No heard you say that, what was his response back? He kind of just smiled and was like, ah, you know, I, I've been telling you. I was like, yeah, I know. I know. I got to listen to you. I know. So as you got to your senior year and, you you know, you knew it was going to be kind of like the last ride, unless maybe it won't be. Who knows? But if it was to be kind of what was your mentality coming into this now past season? Um, I had an interesting start, like an interesting year because everyone I've been playing with, in high school graduated I was the youngest of that kind of like oh there's one girl behind me but there was I was kind of always with that pack of girls above me so Mm -hmm. it was like I didn't know how we were going to play together I didn't know how it was going to go I didn't know what the bonds were going to be like so when I started the season and I was a captain I made a point I was like I don't care what the record is we're gonna have fun this is my senior year I got a lot of taken away a lot I didn't get to do a lot of the things I wanted to do so we're going to make the best of it. And I know my um, other senior captain, we were like, we're, this is our last ride. We're going to focus on the good things. We're not going to dwell on the bad. And I tried to do as much as I could for my teammates and my younger girls and try to help them because it was about me in the sense that it was my senior year, but they're building a team for the next few years to come too. And I want them to have that relationship and be able to see things that I implemented when I go back and watch them next year. So it was really just a lot about community and we worked through a lot of stuff that way and that was kind of my focus like have fun and I'm sure you know what you know from what coach no told me that you know you and the rest of the team did have a lot of fun and it was even though the success may have not been what everybody wanted as far as getting as far and such you know do you feel like that your senior year was a success especially after COVID weird wonky season and then you suffer a serious injury right I had a bunch of fun. I mean, I, I hope everyone had as much fun as I did because, I mean, we we were together all the time. We were all, we did, we pasta parties, we go to this game, we hang out with the boys team, you know, we do a bunch of stuff. So, like, I think end of the day, when I'm older, that I'm going to remember that more than I remember what our record was. And especially the coaches too, like, I got even closer with the coaches than I ever had just because I was focused on building those relationships more than I had been um, the past few years. So, definitely. I definitely think it was still a win. It's still a win in my book. I still had fun. So I got to ask, because you mentioned the boys team, and for people who may not know, they won the Division Five championship, first time in 20-something years, beat a very good Chapog team. Um, so congratulations to the boys team. I'm trying to get Courtney on, you know, trying to work something out with him so he can come on. So That's who I was talking to my friend oh, about. Oh, awesome. Yeah, he, <laughs> he mentioned about wanting to do the interview during school, and I'm like, no, do your focus on that. We can do this, you know, when you got some time. Right. But – while I mentioned the boys team, I, you know, I'm thinking, was there any sort of like, were you able to beat them in one-on-one? I mean, either Alisani, maybe Smith, the point guard, maybe even Courtney himself. Did you win some battles with them? <laughs> I don't 
don't know if we ever went ahead. They, they got a little height advantage. Uh, <laughs> true, true. But in but we also, I mean, we didn't really play together. But I went out. They went to as many of our games as they could. I I made a point that our senior night was moved so they could come to our come to ours because I was like, we need to support each other, like. And I didn't think that we had had that as much in the past years, but I've had a, cl- I have a close relationship with both of the senior captains. So I just wanted to make a point that both teams were supporting each other. And I think that they felt the same way. Do you feel like, and you know, I appreciate you coming on Carly. It's a lot of fun to be able to talk with you about Windsor Locks basketball and yourself. Do you feel like that you have left, even though you haven't graduated yet, you don't want to speed that up because you still got softball to play, but do you feel like that you've left, uh, like you mentioned, as far as maybe in past years, uh, the seniors or just players didn't go to the to the boys games and so on, you know, try to support the school more. Do you feel like you've left a legacy there that can kind of be carried forward now, even after you graduate? Well, I definitely hope so. I mean, in my personal opinion, I'd say I'd say, yeah, I think as a captain, I took a lot of responsibility and tried to start some like traditional things that I hope the class after me does and the class after them does um, just even in our circle, even at practice, just trying to be that energy. And I hope that they carry that energy on because that's what the Lady Ray program is all about. It's all about effort and energy. And I feel like there's times where not all the leadership is like, mm-hmm. not all leadership has the same energy. And so I kind of thought that my energy was like a vocal point at times. And I'm hoping that the next classes just kind of carry that over. If they learned anything from me, it's like, how to be present. And I think that I did a good job of that. And, and, you know, how much fun was it too to be able to, you know, be a long coach? No, for four years. Cause I've, you know, I met him in person. I've had him on the podcast a couple of times, but I met him in person at Mohegan. He came down during half and I just gave him a big bear hug. <laughs> and just be able to talk with him for a couple minutes. I could see why he is such a big figure right. with the locks community, but what has he meant to you? Well, I had him for a teacher in seventh grade, so it really goes far back. He was making fun of me since seventh grade about making me run when I get to high school and going to all these practices and and he came, I remember coming, him coming to middle school games and I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, like the high school coach is here. Like I got to do good. Mm-hmm. Um, and the next day in class, we'd talk about it. And it was just, he, like, I've never had a coach like care as much about it. I don't, I don't, maybe I'm biased, but I don't think I've ever had a coach or any other coach out there that cares much about his program and gives up as much of his time and effort and energy as he does. And coach Shaw too. And we had a bunch of helpers, honestly, Lena. they all volunteer so much extra like and he talks about it too like he gives up family time he's after school every day he's changing practice what works better for his players like he he was an amazing coach and I'm I'm very very grateful that he was in the Windsor Locks so and I did not know that so how much more impressive is that for a guy who is doing all of that and you know every school is different but your school to my recollection is not a very big school no, we have 400 kids in the high school. <laughs> so, I mean, that's more than what I had in my high school, but I went to a Catholic school. Neither here nor there, but anywho, um, do you feel like he deserves, and I think he does, more credit, as all I'm sure all the coaches do, because of what is kind of like, you don't get to pick from everywhere. You are picking from what you get. It's a public school, right. but you're having so much success teaching the young men and women the game of which whatever coach they're coaching does that make sense yeah so um if I understood the question correctly I think definitely since we're in such a small school part of it is you know do you have a lot of athletes in that grade do you or do you not and you know so but what I think was amazing about coach no was that he took girls who have in some cases I know a few that just started playing that year and then teaching them throughout the year like a starting with basketball fundamentals and a lot of coaches I think expect people to be you know up to par with a lot of high school standards and he's taking these girls in and literally teaching them and like watching everyone progress in just a few months of Mm -hmm. like learning basketball and I think that not every coach can have like the patience or the time to work with all the players like he did and literally teach them how to play basketball in one season so I think it deserves a lot more recognition than he gets just because just because of his care alone like not a lot of coaches would take the time and I'm he definitely takes the time that's one thing about him that no one can no one can take for him he is a very very caring coach 
Who's the one player that I need to watch for next year as someone who could potentially be, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll talk to anybody because it's just awesome to be able to hear the stories, but who can maybe be a top performer of the week next year for the podcast from live? Jasmine, Jasmine Hurdle will be a junior next year. I think she, uh, yeah, she will be a junior next year. Uh, she grew up watching me and the three above me that I had mentioned earlier. And she was right there with us. She's trying to, she's, two years younger than them, two years younger, or whatever the amount is, I don't know, <laughs> but um, she was right there with us, and she was working just as hard to keep up with girls who are older than her, she's in, she played AAU as long as I had, um, so she's working just as hard, and I think that she's going to have a big leadership role next year, and so I'm hoping, you know, she if she learned anything from me, she's going to step up to the plate, like I know she will, and uh, she is a phenomenal basketball player, so she's definitely one of the better point guards I know, so I'm hoping you know, her time, it's her time to shine next year. So definitely. I'll make her. sure I have to write that down. Make sure, remember that name just in case. I'm sure Coach No will tell me about it. Right. For sure. Now, Carla, I appreciate you coming on. Before I let you go, Um, as far as with now softball being, and I already know, I think scrimmage has started. The season starts pretty soon as well. Mm -hmm. um, is it hard to kind of, even while you're, not to say you're thinking about it while you're playing the game of softball, but maybe while you're driving there, or maybe in between innings, if you're just, you know, enjoying the nice day and whatever, and you're not up to bat. Um, the game of basketball, do you feel like it's ever going to fully leave the noggin? I feel like it never will. I don't think, I don't think there's, after having it implemented that in my life that much, I don't think there's any chance of that not being a, a back thought. Even when I pull into the high school, I'm like, oh, which parking lot? Am I going to the bat, the, the gym parking lot or the softball parking lot? Because I feel like I should be going to the gym. And I just spend like so much of my time has been there that I think my brain's just trained to be, I love softball, but I'm always like, my main sport has always been basketball. So it's hard to, and my, some of my same teammates are on the same and I have memories of them while in that softball. I'm like, Oh, I remember we did that at basketball. Like, so I'm definitely always thinking about it. It's definitely always in the back of my mind. And there's like, I can't, you never, I'm never going to shake that. I'm just kind of just how it is. You could always coach. That, that is an option. It's not out of the question. It's definitely not out of the question. I got I'm sure Coach No would love to have you next year. Just yeah, saying. I hope I and that's one thing that he did. He always had um alumni players come back and practice with us and talk to us. So I definitely hope that he asked me to do that in the future because I will 100 percent do it. I'm sure he's going to. I think <laughs> there's there's many, there's not many things that are definite in this in this world. I think that's a definite. <laughs> I sure hope so. Well, Carly, again, I appreciate you coming on. A lot of fun being able to talk with you. Uh, best of luck with your softball season. Hopefully the Locks, Lady Raiders can have a fun season and hopefully make, I mean, I don't know the success of the program uh, and that's shame on me, but hopefully you guys have a successful season and best of luck as far as what you decide to do uh, upon graduating. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I definitely enjoyed it. And everyone, he is a great announcer and he did a great job. Awesome, awesome. I appreciate it. That wrap things up here on the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Mercy T stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm our journey. Find them all. Enjoy this day, everybody, and be well.